because that's the only way you can grow your revenues to grow the whole thing. Well, given all the mandates and given where the county, had, frankly, has traditionally uh, gone in its budget, you'll see that that growth percentage has been only about 1% of the entire piece. And that's something that I think long-term, structurally, would need to change if you're going to start to really long-term uh, grow those revenues. So, so those uh, pages three and four really show you where the money is spent. And what you'll see on page one is the response that we've had to, we've had to take in this crisis. We've simply had to do, and, and uh, uh, folks know I'm a Democrat, but fiscal conservatives say it, and I've been saying it for years. We've had to live within our means. It hasn't been easy. But we simply couldn't spend money that we, we, could, that we, that we weren't bringing in. And we've had to make a lot of tough decisions. Uh, we've had to, um, obviously it's no secret, we've had to reduce the number of personnel. Not just empty positions, but also uh, real people losing their jobs, and it's been painful. Uh, we have done a lot of work to restructure and to merge departments. Uh, we have gotten rid of some, some spending that we just couldn't afford to do anymore. Um, and we have made a whole lot of other tough decisions to get us through this. But you will see that in this budget, you know, we, we um, took spending. From 06, we inherited a 255.7. When I got there, I inherited that. And you'll see that we have dramatically reduced that amount of spending. I, I, I dare say in the last 50 or 100 years, you will never see a four-year period where county government reduced by this much in its size and its budget by this percentage. Uh, we are now, that 2010 number, you'll see in 2005 was a 243, that 2010 number is a number that was the level of spending in 1998 in Hamlin County. And again, you look around uh, the, the state, the country, you will rarely see a government that has gone back that many years and, and made cuts to that effect, and, and that's what we've done. And as um, the governor said in something was that last night, it, it, it's, it's not fun. It's not, you know, this is not good news, but it also was what we had to do in a tough time. And um, my hope is that as we're starting to see, you know, the last, couple, the last couple months, the sales tax has started to stabilize. And by stabilize, I mean, and I have a page on this, not being as negative as it was. Um, as someone said to me a couple months ago, um, what was it, um, flat is the new up. If we can just be at zero percent, we will be doing very well in our budget. Uh, we have actually, in the last two years, one of the reasons until about two weeks ago, there wasn't that much drama around our budget, was because we have projected very conservatively the last couple of years uh, in terms of um, what we thought would come in. And we did, we were off the mark like everyone, but we actually projected, we think, lower projections on revenues than any county in the state. So as numbers started coming in in the last year that showed us things aren't coming in well, we had to adjust downward, but we didn't have to go nearly as far as the city had to do in the last year or as other counties had to do because we were already projecting a negative sales tax for the entire year. But like I said, you know, we, our hope is that 2009 was the toughest year. 2010, our budget we just completed was, was pretty darn tough as well. And our hope is that having gone all the way down to $208.9 million in spending, that if we start to see what we've seen the last couple months, and I've all of a sudden become a real um, hawk watching every revenue stream we've got, you start, the last three of the last four months we've seen home sales go up. Uh, the last couple months we've seen our best sales tax numbers of the year. Uh, Hamlin County, believe it or not, we have had, although our unemployment is too high, we've been in the top 20% of all the counties of the state all year long in terms of the, how low our unemployment is. Uh, so our hope is that you start to see those things and if we get to a point uh, where everything just sits at zero, then all of a sudden we have budgeted in a way that we will start to see surpluses. Uh, you know, we're not counting on it, uh, but, but that's, we, we have tightened our numbers so much that with those low, low uh, expectations we've set, um, we, we, we hope that the 2010 on our general fund uh, is actually um, the lowest it will be. Now, that's all gloom and doom and cuts. Let me say very clearly, and this is true in the state and everywhere else, we're not going to cut our way out of this. We're not going to cut our way 
we have to cut if we don't have the expenditure, we don't have the revenues coming in. But simply cutting and, and, and doing the layoffs and furloughs we've done and some of the other things, we all know that's, that's not the way you're going to get long term where we need to go as a county. And that's why at the same time that we've been very fiscally disciplined on spending, uh, we have also pursued sort of the, the end game strategy, which is to get out of this and move forward. And, and that, in the end, is, is even more important than simply living within this challenging short-term revenue crunch. And that's why we've done two very important things that I'll touch on, and folks in this room are working very hard on these. One is we've got to reform, and we've got to restructure. Because uh, whether or not we have revenues fall this much again or, or, or not, uh, I think all governments are going to be in some level of, of squeeze, really, for a long time, or, or forever, if we don't adjust. And that is where the work we are doing as a county to look into sharing services, getting governments across this county and beyond to start thinking about how can they do things differently? How can they do things collaboratively or go so far as to consolidate services so that we all begin to really figure out how we can do more with less? Because as much as I'm talking about our revenue streams and our budget, every jurisdiction in this, in this county and beyond is looking at re their own revenue streams. It looks just like this. And each one of those mayors or township trustees is facing the same decisions we are, which is how do we, we can't do everything we used to do under these budgets. Now, some of these decisions about merging certain things are difficult, but I think for those mayors and for us, the township trustees, it at some point has become very clear, and it is already clear, I think, to many, that the, the only way they're going to be able to keep doing certain services that their citizens want is by not insisting that they alone do it, but that we figure out ways on, on big issues and small issues to share services, to merge services, so that the service is done, but at a much lower cost, collectively. Uh, and that's one very important area of, of reform, that we, we can't just keep cutting long term. Because generally, when you're cutting, you're reducing service. Uh, long term, though, if we're going to produce more service for less cost, but actually continue with quality services, it's going to only happen, I think, because we're smart enough to start having the conversations. And the good news is that we have, uh, with the help, frankly, of a number of people in this room, we've been having very good conversations, very good dialogues, and, and really studying some of the, some of the lower-hanging fruit when it comes to merging and sharing services. Uh, the second thing, and I can talk about that when we, when we go to questions, the second thing we have to do, we got to invest to grow. And if you look at this um, chart, investing that tiny percentage, this pie chart, in economic growth just isn't going to cut it. I mean, we are in a competitive world, folks. And we have seen the result just in this region. If other competitors, and I, you know, we're regional, but we also are competing in different ways. And, and as we watched other folks in our region get more aggressive on economic development, invest in new infrastructure, take um, land they have and make it places that, that, that um, businesses want to locate, they're growing because of it. We've seen it for years, and this is one reason, and this is probably a 50-50 issue in this room, one reason Indiana did so well. They took all that casino money that they were getting, and they invested it in infrastructure and that's when they, when they wanted a Honda plant there, they got it. And we didn't have a chance when we tried to get it because they made investments in infrastructure that allowed them to have it. Uh, we almost lost graders because of that same use of those dollars to try and get economic growth done. 